everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to talk about um, the diaphragm and transverse abdominis and the pelvic floor. So we got this uh, diagram over here, the spine and the pelvis, and then we have the ribs up top, and then we're going to talk about how uh, these three muscles connect to help hold everything together. So we have the diaphragm here and that's going to connect to the inside um, of the six ribs, bottom six ribs. And then we have the transverse abdominis, which is going to connect the uh, pelvis to the ribs. And then we have the pelvic floor, which is going to connect um, the tailbone or the coccyx, the bottom of the spine, to the front bottom portion of the pelvis. And the three of these and, and others are going to help provide uh, spinal stability and hip stability and we want to use our breathing to help us create this stability. So we call this stability from the breath uh, intra-abdominal pressure and when we create an, or when we take an inhale we breathe in we create this intra-abdominal pressure and as that happens the, uh, the diaphragm is going to lengthen and pull down, creating an eccentric contraction and opening up the lungs, allowing us to take a big breath in. And then when we exhale, uh, the diaphragm is going to contract and it's going to push up and it's going to be more of like this flat shape um, as opposed to having the dome shape on that bottom diagram. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, but we want to just go through some of the places where these these all interact with each other. So, um, as I said, the diaphragm attaches to the inside of the bottom six ribs, and then it's going to attach into the low back area, the top of the low back, and then it's going to attach into the uh, sternum, at right at the bottom of the chest bone here. And then we have the transverse abdominis, which is also going to attach to the bottom six ribs. And then it is going to attach to the low back, through the thoracolumbar fascia. And then it's going to attach to the front of the spine. And then we have the pelvic floor, which is going to connect the spine from the tailbone and the backside up to the front of the pelvis at the the bottom of the pelvis and the uh, the transverse abdominis is connected to this part of the pelvis through the inguinal ligament and that is going to be important in the fact that um, that's how these are all connected to each other so we have the pelvic floor connecting um, the spine to the front of the pelvis and then we have that ligament connecting um, the pubic bone where they both attach, connecting that to the top front portion of the pelvis and then that runs up and connects to the sternum. So it ties this all together here and the um, way we're going to be able to use these muscles the most effectively is through our breathing. So you can't do like crunches or enough sit-ups to help you get these muscles to interact well. Um, the best way to do it is focusing on our breath. And so I have this other diagram here. We're going to talk about this a little bit and just go through how this interaction occurs. And then we have some exercises for you to uh, practice and, and use as a, a warm up or just like a way to kind of get your breathing going for you um, throughout your day. Definitely something I think is good to practice is just getting your breathing going. A lot of times our posture inhibits uh, some of this. Current. So, the top one here, we have an inhale, and when when we inhale, diaphragm is going to pull down and it's going to lengthen, and that will end up looking like this in this dome shape, and the muscles in the belly, they're going to um, open up and they're going to allow us to breathe in, and the diaphragm is moving down to create space for the lungs to open and then the, the belly is going to expand, the ribs are going to expand a little bit to create uh, space for the diaphragm to move down. In doing so, uh, pelvic floor is also going to kind of pull down a little bit 
Um, I like to think of this as like a lengthening process where we can still, it's still holding tension. Um, so it's not like completely like relaxing, it's not doing anything, it's, it's allowing that space to um, take the breath in. And then on the exhale, as we uh, exhale here, we're going to have the diaphragm start to push up and it's gonna end up being in this shape there when it gets to the full exhale. And as that happens, the belly is going to come in and you're gonna get that contraction uh, through the core and then the pelvic floor is going to get nice and snug as well. And doing our breathing like this is going to give us the most optimal use of our core. So as we take that inhale in, this pulls down, creates space, and then we exhale, this collapses in and um, it contracts. So as we create that um, expansion around, around the rib cage and in the belly some, we get a 360 degree expansion that's gonna create intra-abdominal pressure and that's gonna help us stabilize the spine. And then as we exhale, we get that belly to contract, pushing that air out, feel that contraction happen in the core that is going to um, also stabilize the spine. So that contraction of the core stabilizes the spine, and then the inhale is going to stabilize the spine as the intra-abdominal pressure builds up. And the two of those mechanisms happening back and forth with each breath, that's gonna give us um, tremendous stability through the spine, um, more stability than you can create by like squeezing on making six pack abs, um, it's, it's going to give us more optimal performance out of our core because what happens if we're like completely squeezed through here and I'm really tight in here, I'm not allowing my abdomen to expand as I take that breath in. I'm restricting uh, this from pulling down and creating a more open muscle there and then that's going to make me restrict to some and how much I can get air in or I might end up trying to breathe and lift my chest to create that um, that respiratory response of breathing in. And a lot of people start to pick up different mechanisms for their breathing and they end up being like uh, chest breathers or their neck breathers and they start to lift their shoulders and start to engage those muscles more to pull air in. And the fact that these all connect into uh, the linea alba and to the sternum and to the top of the pelvis and it's all interwoven uh, with the internal and external obliques we talked about that in a different video um, in the transverse abdominal this all connects to that midline that runs down um, this is a very very important uh, aspect of uh, just normal biomechanics getting uh, normal function from our, uh, our organs and our muscles uh, to be in the right position and to get that breathing mechanism going. So let's go ahead and do a couple breathing exercises and then when you do your core work and you're doing your regular workouts, just try to keep the same breathing mechanism going throughout the duration of your exercises. And try to get into like a relaxed position, a neutral spine. Um, so we don't wanna be like posterior tilting we also don't want to be like super arched here. So like just a little arch here, you can slide your hand and you can feel that it kind of gets stuck. It's not going to go all the way underneath. Um, we're going to have slight arch, but we're not like jamming down or anything. We're just going to relax in this position here. And then what I like to do is I'll put my hands on my ribs. Like my thumbs are underneath my ribs here. So I can kind of feel that uh, expansion happening. And then I'm going to go ahead and inhale, inhale, and then you'll feel like tension building up. This is called intra-abdominal pressure. And you'll feel that pressure building up in your side walls of your core. That's that stretching happening. And um, you'll feel like a little lengthening happening in the pelvic floor. And as that's happening, we want to just feel that pressure for a second. And then we're going to exhale, push it out of the mouth. And then we'll get a nice squeeze up from the pelvic floor. And then we'll also get this to squeeze in from the abs. So they're going to kind of push in. And then the diaphragm will be pushing 
up to, um, to push the air out of the lungs. And then I like to just get into a good rhythm here. And typically what I'll, I'll have people do is go in their nose. Uh, if they're not like, if you have sinuses and your allergies bothering you or you got a cold, uh, you can do it through your mouth. It's definitely more effective going through your nose and nasal breathing is, is definitely a, a wonderful thing. There's, there's a lot of stuff about that too. Um, but one place that I like to, to just start is going tongue onto the roof of the mouth and on the back of the teeth. And then from there, we're just going to press up into that position. That's going to help us engage uh, and open up the, the throat a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and inhale through the nose. Feel that expansion happening. And then just pushing that air out of your mouth. Um, almost like you're blowing through a straw or like you can make pursed lips and just forcing that air out. And then I like to think about taking like your time with these breaths. So take maybe a five second inhale, you have a five second exhale. And think about the tension you can create from your pelvic floor while this is happening. So it's it's one of the hardest things to do trying to train your, your pelvic floor without breathing. You know, you can't you can't get it as well. Once you get your breathing going and you're feeling that um, tension building up in the pelvic floor, you feel that intra-abdominal pressure building up in the core, you start to sense how this is all connected. And once you're feeling that, you can notice when you exhale, it contracts in your belly and your abs come in. That contraction is going to help us stabilize the spine. Intra-abdominal pressure, that expansion, that helps us stabilize the spine. And so through breathing, even though these muscles are going through a contract and lengthened state, they're, they're still holding tension through the lengthened state. They're just reciprocating energy between the, the two, between the belly expansion that's when we're going to get that contraction in um, the, the diaphragm pulling down and that's going to make that uh, open up through the belly. And using that breathing as that interaction happens, we're always going to have an ability to keep our spine stable. So once we have that down, we, we get the breathing going pretty well. We can add like a book or for instance, I have just like a, a five pound little plate here and this added resistance isn't much it's just to help build a little bit more sensory and kind of strengthen that mind to muscle connection it's not like I'm doing heavy chest presses or doing anything um, super heavy with with the weight but the weight is going to make me work a little bit harder so I have to, to pull in a little bit harder and try to expand and create that pressure a little bit more and it's a good go using a book or, or anything is, is good you can use just your hands press it into that it's a really good thing to do uh, another one I like to do is you can do this seated or you could do this standing, either one is fine. But we wanna, again, be sitting in a nice neutral position, uh, relax in here. And I wanna try to tuck my hands in just a little bit under the ribs again. And this is gonna help me uh, kind of resist the diaphragm as it's working. So we're thinking about, again, same breathing mechanism, going ahead and breathing in the nose. Pushing it out the mouth. And you'll feel that you can kind of sneak your fingers under your ribs a little bit uh, as you go for that exhale. As you inhale, it's going to push you out. And you can push against that, and it's going to fight that a little bit. And this can help us get a little bit more sensory, a little bit more connection to our diaphragm, understanding how that um, like works kind of like an auxiliary pump. And it pulls down, and as it pulls down, is going to create room for air in the lungs and, and create space for that. And then as it pushes up, it just pushes it all out and 
There are other respiratory muscles in, um, in the body, the chest, and you know, some of the neck muscles are going to work, and then the back also. But our main one is going to be this auxiliary pump, and that's going to be uh, a really big feature here with breathing. And um, for our last breathing exercise, um, and, and really like to spend time within each breathing exercise. So like, give yourself a couple minutes, you know. You know, after you have some practice, a minute is, is still good to get yourself warmed up. Um, but you know, it, it might take two, three minutes for you to start to make some mental connections to that. So take your time um, doing those exercises. And if you notice, you know, you got a hip shift or you're, you know, you're a sloucher when you're working or you're always on the phone on this side and you know, this tissue over here tends to get a little bit more jammed up or maybe you've had a previous injury you know and you have a harder time filling and by filling I mean getting that expansion um, from that breath in you have a harder time getting that to kind of stretch and open up and allow you to breathe into that side then what I like to do and you could do you could do various ways of doing this. You could just start with a little split stance, and what I'll do is I'll open this side. I'm gonna just rotate a little bit, take this arm up, and then I'm gonna take this other hand in. So this is the side that is harder for me to fill uh, when I feel sticky. It's been great lately. I'm very thankful. Uh, <laughs> but when it does, and it will sometimes, it'll feel a little jammed up. I'll just get into this split position, I'll start that rotation, just to get this tissue already open, and then I'm just going to try to breathe into my hand. I'm going to fill that area up, and it might be a little tough at first, uh, but once you again get that rhythm going, you can really feel that, and you'll feel this side's contracting because it's automatically going to contract because of the position. But we're going to be working to, to get this side to, to do the same thing. And then come back to neutral, see how you do with your breathing and see if you can feel about the same as you can feel on this side. Another way you could do with that is you can, you can start to, to add a band into this. You can lean across and then same idea. And now I'm starting to lean a little bit into my left and um, I'm letting that band pull me off to the right. So I'm getting a little bit of extra stretch from the band down the side. And that's going to help me as I want to fill that area. That area needs to stretch uh, as I, I lean into that band and let that band help me pull that position. Uh, it's just going to make my, my job a little bit easier. And once you get that breathing mechanism back um, you know that's the natural way to breathe so we can we can usually maintain that but it takes some mindfulness um, there's certain things with posture that are going to be a little disruptive for that so one thing with sitting is when we sit and we end up hunched over here and we can feel that our our ribs are down from where they normally would be they, they would normally be here Right, and then when I go ahead and collapse down, my ribs are not here, they're down here now. So that alone, that's going to kind of push down and inhibit some of the um, ability of the diaphragm to pull down and then for that expansion to happen. It's going to be inhibited because of this posture, right? This is all jammed up and we're not going to get the same kind of breathing in. But it's definitely a great place to start, especially if you do, um, you know, experience some back issues or you feel some like tension uh, originating in like your low back across the waistband. Um, you feel like you're not in a good pelvic position. Like if you you find yourself tilted forward, getting back to breathing, it might be your your first go. It might be where you want to start. Um, it, it's really helpful to build that intra-abdominal pressure and then we don't have to think about sitting here squeezing on the abs if we're sitting here like I'm just holding so much tension in my belly and I'm trying to just squeeze all day long because it takes stress off my back well that's that's not going to um, help us breathe better because remember we need that to expand on the inhale 
And if I'm just jamming that down, I'm going to inhibit that expansion. And it's, it's not going to fulfill the full capacity of that core. That everything working together. If we're just pinching down, we're not going to be using the whole core at once. If we're breathing, that's going to enable us to, to use our core a little bit easier. There's a lot of interconnected stuff. Right down the middle, we have the linea alba from the bottom of the sternum, and that runs all the way down to the bottom of the pelvis. And we have these side muscles that run in, they connect there at that big transverse muscle. Sometimes it's referred to as our inner corset. And um, that really helps us with just stabilizing without having to be rigid. Right? If we're rigid, we can't rotate as well. So we want to be more fluid, able to breathe into our core, able to rotate as we walk or run, and having that freedom and a lot of times a lot of times it will start with the breathing and so I do like to do breathing practices breathing exercises throughout the day um, if I didn't get to do any through my day I will go ahead and do that as part of the warm-up for my my exercise routine um, but I think it's a good thing to get into the habit of just focusing on your breathing you know, getting that inhale holding tension um, in your core as you, you feel that expansion, feel that tension building, and then as you exhale, feel that collapse, feel that pull up at the pelvic floor and, and create more tension through there with, with like intentionality, thinking about it. And um, you know, even if you just do that for a minute throughout your day, um, it'll help. It'll, it'll bring more positional awareness, a little bit more sensory through. And the better we have our spine in a better position, the better we'll have uh, communications. We think about all of our nerves are gonna run through our spine, and if that's getting disrupted because of a poor breathing pattern or a poor posture positioning, um, then we can make some easy wins just by cleaning up our, our breathing and our, our positions you know, with our spine. So definitely something to consider if you have you know, different issues with the back or you know, even with, um, different types of hernias we can really benefit from the breathing because a lot of times we're squeezing one area you know where we're having like the the separation you can get a separation at your linea alba and breathing can help kind of bring that back in so sometimes it's going to be more more permanent but the breathing can help us develop the core muscles around that you know sometimes we can get a hernia down more towards the groin and again the breathing can help us um, you know, restore that normal uh, support and girdle that we get from the transverse abdominis. So it's um, it's a lot to think about, but if you really are just practicing the um, the breathing aspect of it, like you'll get the benefits of it. If you're thinking about where you're getting your tension from, um, you'll be able to uh, get the benefits of that, and then take that to your workout. You know, if you're doing an exercise and you're doing a deadlift or a squat or a lunge and you're not able to maintain that breathing mechanism and stabilizing your spine with that breathing mechanism, then maybe reduce how much weight it is or reduce the reps uh, to where it's a place where you can maintain that and continue to stabilize the spine with intra-abdominal pressure and continue your workout at a place where that's a, a realistic thing. Uh, I know it's, it's a, a tough thing to to like kind of take a step away from some of that like I, I definitely have experienced that where I you know I'm pushing more weight than my body is able to maintain some of that some of those mechanisms and um, you know you have to kind of repattern it sometimes especially after an injury and you have to get back to the breathing and get the basics going and then you can get back and do that stuff and build back up to heavy weights and you know moving around and pushing yourself at a higher level but sometimes you just need to get back to the fundamentals and that is a great place to be because we have to we have to own the fundamentals so that is all I have for today um, really appreciate your time and I hope this is helpful for you and I will see you next week <laughs>